So recently I purchased a new battery backup. It's hurricane season here and it never hurts to be prepared. And so uh, I purchased a couple of different brands. I bought an APC and also uh, a CyberPower. Uh, the CyberPower, unfortunately, when it arrived, uh, had something wrong with it on the inside. There was something rattling around uh, and I never actually turned the thing on or even plugged it in for that matter, just out of fear of who knows what's rolling around in there. It's an electrical short, batteries could explode, who knows. Um, so anyway, I contacted CyberPower and uh, before uh, they were willing to give me a replacement, they said that I had to field destroy it. So in this episode of Retro Axis, I'm going to destroy this CyberPower battery backup unit. So stay tuned. <music> So before I get started, I'd like to talk a little bit about the importance of a battery backup. Uh, I find them very important for things like video game consoles or desktop computers or other sensitive devices where uh, you want to keep it running in case there's a brownout or, or a long, you know, a short-term power failure, uh, or really in, uh, any equipment that's sensitive to fluctuations in electricity. Uh, battery backups are really great for that because uh, not only do they just um, provide power, they also ensure that the voltage is constant the entire time the unit is plugged in. So that way if there's even a slight deviation in voltage up or down, uh, that can actually be uh, harmful to electronic equipment. So having a battery backup provides you not just power availability in case of an outage, but also consistent uh, power to ensure the longevity of your electronic devices. So huge fan of these. I've had them for many years. I've had this APC for a very long time. This is an old unit, uh, almost like a a larger version of a surge protector. And I've also had this cyber power unit. This is an old unit that I've had for maybe, I don't know, eight years or so, and it's been really rock solid, never even changed the battery on this unit. It's been that good. Um, and some of these uh, units also have the ability to plug it in via USB or to monitor it. So you can actually hook it up to a computer and uh, you can automatically shut your computer down in the case that the uh, battery starts getting lower. Uh, so there's a lot of really great features and reasons to have a battery backup, um, especially if you're retro gaming, if you're, if you're on an old school platform like a Sega Genesis or a Nintendo uh, or any, any of these old systems. Um, you know, if you're in the middle of a game and you're playing Mega Man and the power goes out and you got to start that level all over again, there's nothing worse than that. So uh, highly recommend battery backups for anyone who's doing uh, retro gaming. So let me show you what was wrong with this unit. So when I first opened it up, I pulled it out of the box from the factory OEM. This was from Amazon. It was unopened. It was a brand new unit. And when I first opened it, I pulled the unit out and I heard, you can hear something just rattling around in there. And I, I can't tell if it's metal. I can't tell if it's plastic, but hey, better safe than sorry. So, I mean, I didn't even take the cord off. I mean, it's, I never plugged it in. So I contacted CyberPower and the reply that I got, dear customer, the product in your possession will need to be field destroyed before a replacement can be provided to you. Please follow the below steps to field destroy the unit. Now, this is the first time I've ever had uh, a, co a company ask me to actually physically destroy something and provide them evidence of the destruction beforehand. So I'm gonna use the rest of this video to follow these steps, destroy this unit, and then I will submit the rest of my uh, return merchandise claim and we'll see what happens. So uh, stay tuned and we're gonna start taking this thing apart. So the first step is to remove the battery. So to do that here on the bottom of this particular unit, and this is a uh, CyberPower 1500 VA that's the model number uh, that I have here. I need to remove these two Phillips screws down here at the bottom. So let me remove those. Okay. And then I will remove this bottom panel. And as you can see, here's the actual batteries. Uh, there's actually two batteries in here. There's also a plate. So I'm going to remove this, this plate. And these are sealed batteries, so there's no risk of, of acid or anything leaking out. So these are sealed. Okay. We're supposed to disconnect negatives first. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do is these are on there pretty tight. There we go. 
I'm going to pull that. So now I've got the top battery disconnected. And now you can see I've got one. So let's remove the upper battery. There we go. And there's my two batteries. So that part is done. So the next thing they want me to do, is says if uh, I need to cut the power cord flush with the unit. So we've got this here. We've got a pair of snips here. Just, just in case, I, I doubt there's any electricity in here at all, but just in case, one thing you can do, you can actually press the on button and it should discharge any capacitors. Theoretically, there shouldn't be any power to this thing, but you just never know. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut that as they suggested. So here's my power cord. The next piece, if the product has a screen, disable the screen so it is visibly broken. So uh, this is the fun part. We get to smash something. So I, you can see I haven't even removed <laughs> this from the protective cover yet from, from the screen. Uh, but what I'm gonna do, just, just, just for good measure, I'm gonna disconnect this. And you can see they actually have this ribbon cable, which actually they've got some glue in there. So I'm gonna actually remove that glue. We got that pulled off. So now I have my screen. So now we're gonna have some fun. I'm gonna go outside, I'm gonna smash it with this mallet. So let's go do that. All right, so here's the actual screen itself. You can see as of right now, it's perfectly intact. It's actually a real shame to damage this. I wonder if it'd be nice to be able to reuse something like this, but you know, having the battery back up is, is more important. So I'm gonna go ahead and, and I've got my mallet. I'm gonna go ahead and smash it. Ready, one, two, three. Ooh, interesting. It actually, uh, Huh, it's actually inside of a shield. I didn't realize it's on a board on the inside here. And it's, um, I'm gonna have to remove that. Let's see if we can get that off of there. There we go, here's something. So I've got this physically damaged. Oh, you can actually see the screen shattered, which is, which is what, they, what they asked for. But I'm gonna see if I can actually remove it from here as well. There you go, physically shattered, I think that's what they were looking for it's nice and smashed up so let's go back inside and finish it up so now that i've smashed the control panel uh, let's just take a quick look at the results so you can see here the panel's been smashed really good this was the actual where the screen was able to pop in and out you can see the button panel is completely gone here's the actual uh bezel for that uh this was the screen cover uh this was uh some other piece like a shield uh, this was uh, another shield here's the actual screen which is actually shattered you can see where it's it's really taken a beating but um, I thought it was really cool that it was uh, the way they integrated this into the device it's just a really neat little little screen it's a shame I couldn't reuse something like this but uh, per the instructions uh, I did have to shatter it so I think what I'm gonna do next I'm gonna put all this stuff uh, into a box here and I think what I'm gonna do is actually I'm really curious and I know it's a little dangerous to open up something like this but I do want to I do want to look on the inside and actually see what was rolling around in there I'm really very curious if, if, if this was worth doing all this so uh, stay tuned I'm gonna open up the unit and find out what the source of the noise was so I'm gonna start by removing the screws on the back I'm gonna take this expansion cover off first and, and I did actually look in here initially when I first received the unit thinking maybe there was something loose in one of the accessible compartments either the battery compartment or the expansion uh, port and unfortunately uh, these are sealed compartments with really no access to, to anything so I'm going to remove these exterior uh, external screws get these pulled out and um, interior here now keep in mind that um, this is not user serviceable or not intended to be user serviceable at all so it is a bit risky to open up, up a, uh, a UPS or a battery backup so I would not suggest that you do this um, but I do have some experience with electronics and I feel pretty confident that I can at least take a look inside without uh, causing any significant injury or, or uh, electrical shortage It is off. Let's do now to get that part out. And there it is. This is the part. 
So after finding the culprit here, this uh, heat sink PCB, I'm not exactly sure uh, what this is for. Uh, it doesn't seem to have any sort of circuitry or anything on it. It looks like just part of a main board that, that either snapped off or maybe it was uh, some, some other purpose. I'm not really sure. If you look closely, you can see there's these little bitty, uh, like looks like attachment points maybe for something, almost like a perforation. And you can see that this one up here looks as if it's been snapped. Um, but definitely cause for concern if you're talking about heat or a heat sink, that can lead to failures or fires or who knows what, you know, a thing could shut down at random, who knows. So uh, really glad that I contacted them before turning this thing on. And if you ever encounter, you know, a, a piece of power equipment that has a, a, a noise or anything that gives you cause for concern, do not plug it in, do not turn it on, make sure you either return it or contact the manufacturer for help. So that's it for this episode. If you got some great information and you want to subscribe, highly recommend you do that. Give us a thumbs up, leave some comments below. Let us know what you think. Take care of yourself.